Welcome back, my AP Calc champions. In this problem, we're going to be talking about functions f and g. So this problem says the functions f and g are twice differentiable. The table shown gives values of the functions and their first derivatives at selected values of x. Problem A says let h be the function defined by h of x is equal to f of g of x. Find h prime of 7 and then show the work that leads to your answer. This table above gives us the values of various functions. So we have f of x, we have f prime of x, g of x, and g prime of x. And we're being asked to take the derivative of h of x at 7. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're saying that h of x is equal to f of g of x. So it looks like we're going to be using a little bit of chain rule here to find our derivative. So h prime of x is going to be, so uh, with the chain rule, remember, you're going to take the derivative of the outside stuff first. So our outside stuff is f of x. So the derivative of that is just going to be f prime of g of x, okay? And then we have to multiply it by the derivative of the inner functions. So that's going to be our g prime of x. So this is what our h prime of x looks like. Now we want to figure out what h prime of 7 is. So this is going to be f of g of 7 times g prime of 7. So uh, we actually have to evaluate g of x before we can evaluate that our function f of prime of g of 7. So to find what g of 7 is, we would simply go to that row in our table and then find where 7 is. So it looks like the intersection of those two is going to be 0. So we plug in 0 for this inner part. So now we're being asked to find um, f prime of 0 times g prime of 7. So once again, we're going to go ahead and find the intersection of those two. So f prime is here, 0 is here. So it looks like the the number we're looking for is 3 halves. So 3 halves, and then we need to find g prime of 7. Once again, just doing that same strategy, g prime 7. So this would be our uh, g prime of 7. So we get 3 halves times 8. So we can go ahead simplify a little bit and we are going to get that this answer is 12. Moving on to the next problem, we see that B asks us, it says, let k be the differentiable function such that k prime of x is equal to f of x squared times g of x. Is the graph of k concave up or concave down to the point where x equals 4? Give a reason for your answer. Okay, so this problem is a little bit different, but we are essentially doing that same exact thing. And the reason why is we are given the first derivative of k, but we're being asked whether the graph of k is concave up or concave down. And basically what this question is asking us for is, at the point where x is equal to 4, is the second derivative greater than 0, so concave up, or is the second derivative uh, less than 0, so concave down. And I can go ahead and substitute 4 in here, right, because we're taking the second derivative at x equals 4. Um, so we have our first derivative, we need to make it to the second derivative, so uh, we're going to go ahead and take the derivative of k prime, okay? So k, k prime of x is equal to f of x and all of that squared times g of x. So here we're going to be using a combination of the product rule and the chain rule to evaluate this. So to get the second derivative of k, first we are going to drop down our 2 and then we're going to have f of x. And it's now to the first power, right, that's just power rule. And then we're going to need to use chain rule because we have a function here that we need to take the derivative of, the inner function. So it's going to be times f prime of x. And then since we're doing the product rule, we just multiply by g of x. And then the other half of the product rule, we're going to take the derivative of g of x um, and just multiply it by f of x squared f of x squared times the derivative of g of x is just going to be g prime of x. So now we have to solve for the second derivative of k. Now we actually want to solve for it at the point 4, x equals 4. So now we can go ahead and everywhere we see an x, let's go ahead and plug in a 4. So this one is a little bit more complicated than the last one. f of 4 squared times g prime of 4. Okay, so uh, the 
what we're going to need is f of 4. What is f of 4? So f of 4 is going to be 4. So everywhere we see an f of 4, let's go ahead and replace that with 4. It's going to be here. It's also going to be here. Make sure you don't mess up your parentheses here. Uh, you're squaring all of f of 4. We also need f prime of 4. What is that? Let's see if we can find it in our table. So f prime of 4 is 3. So everywhere we see f prime of 4, we're going to put a 3 there. So it looks like it's just here. We also need g of 4. So g of 4 is negative 3. And let's replace that here. And then the last thing we need is g prime of 4. So g prime of 4. We're really using up every single value. We're really using up a lot of values in our table. So g prime of 4 is 2. So where we see g prime of 4, we can place that with 2. So now we can go ahead and simplify this a little bit. So 2 times 4 times 3, that's going to be... Uh, 24, 24 times negative 3, that's minus 72, I believe. Uh, then we're going to add 4 squared to 16. 16 times 2 is 32. So we're going to get that this is minus 40. Okay, so you might be tempted to just, you know, box that around and say, okay, we got the answer, but we have not yet gotten the answer. This is just going to be the value of the second derivative at x equals 4. We still need to connect the dots. So remember, before I was saying we need either need to check whether it's greater than zero, in which case it's concave up, or we need to check whether it's less than zero, in which case it's concave down. So in this case, because the second derivative at four is equal to minus 40, which is less than zero, k of x is concave down at x equals four. And that would be our answer for part b. Let's go ahead and move on to part C. This one says, let m be the function defined by m of x is equal to 5 times x cubed plus the integral from 0 to x of f prime of t dt. Find m of 2. Show the work that leads to your answer. Okay, so we have defined m of x as this. So now we can we just go ahead and plug in 2 everywhere we see an x and see what that will give us. So 5 times 2 cubed plus the integral from 0 to 2 of f prime of t dt. So simplifying this first part, 2 cubed is going to be 8. 8 times 5 is 40. Then we just need to use the fundamental theorem of calculus here. And that says that you can rewrite an integral such that it looks like this. So f of 2 minus f of 0, right? Essentially, when we're solving for an integral, that this is the value that we're going to be getting. And luckily for us, we know the value of f of 2 and f of 0 because it's within our data table. So that is very nice and convenient for us. So make sure to remember that this is a minus sign. What is f of 2? So what is f of 2? f of 2 is 7. So we're going to have 7 minus f of 0. f of 0 is 10. So it looks like this is going to be 40 minus 3, which is going to be 37. And that is going to be our answer for part C. Let's go ahead and move on to part D. This one says, is the function m defined in part C increasing, decreasing, or neither at x equals 2? Justify your answer. So I've copied down m of x here. When you're being asked whether a function is increasing, decreasing, or neither, there should be an alarm in your head going off that says, hey, what we're about to do is we're about to take the derivative okay we're trying to figure out the slope at that point and whether the slope is positive if it's decreasing negative or neither and which in which case uh, maybe the, the derivative is either not defined or it's zero so these are our three cases that we're trying to figure out so let's go ahead and take the derivative and see what happens at x equals two so if m of x is equal to 5x cubed plus the integral from zero to x of f prime of t dt, then the derivative of m is going to be, we're going to use our power rule here, just drop that 3 down, 3 times 5 is 15, 15x squared, and then when we get to our integral, you can kind of just think as taking the derivative of an integral, it's just going to cancel out this integral sign, and we're going to get rid of our dt as well, okay? So when we're taking the integral, all we're going to be left with is f prime of t, and we can actually even rewrite it as f prime of x because everything is in terms of x, okay? Let me go ahead and add it back in for 
the sake of making m of x still be equal to what it should be equal to. Okay, so we have the first derivative of m. So now we actually need to figure out its value at x equals 2. So let's go ahead and plug that in. So m prime of 2 is equal to 15 times 2 squared plus f prime of 2. So we're going to get 4. 2 squared is 4. 4 times 15 is 60. And then let's see, f prime of 2, we're going to need to go to our data table for that. So f prime of 2 is minus 8. So 60 minus 8 is equal to 52. Don't be too eager and box up this answer. This isn't our complete answer. So remember, I told you we were checking, we're trying to check whether the derivative, the first derivative was positive, negative, or zero or undefined. Um, and it looks like it's positive. So what this means for us is that m is increasing at x equals 2 because m prime of 2 is positive. All right, and that should be our answer for part d. Hopefully this helps you out with these AP calculus problems. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I'll get back to you. And I hope you have a great rest of your day.